Hello friends. In this session we are going to discuss prompt corrective action framework of Reserve Bank of India. Friends, as we are aware, Reserve Bank of India is supervisor of banking system in India or regulator of banking system in India. Being supervisor or being regulator, it is the responsibility of Reserve Bank of India to ensure that banks maintain good financial health. And for this purpose, Reserve Bank initiates a number of actions and one of such actions is a prompt corrective action or PCA as we call it. Friend, PCA is an RBI framework and this framework is initiated in the form of structured actions and these actions are taken in respect of those banks which show sign of weakness in respect of four important areas. And these four important areas are known as the triggers for prompt corrective action. Let us now see what these four triggers are. Friends, the first trigger relates to capital adequacy ratio or common equity tier 1 ratio. The second one asset quality that is the level of net NPS. The third one is profitability. It relates to return on assets ratio. And fourth one is the leverage ratio. Friends, for this purpose, Reserve Bank of India has fixed certain benchmarks also and any bank which is meeting these benchmarks will not be subject to PCA. So PCA will apply only in respect of those banks which show some distortion in respect of these four aspects. Now these four aspects include number one capital to risk asset ratio plus capital conservation buffer it must be at least 10.25 percent. Common equity tier 1 capital plus CCB it must be at least 6.75 percent. The net NP ratio it should be less than 6 percent. Profitability the bank should be earning profit but if there is a loss this loss can be only for one year and tier 1 leverage ratio it should be more than 4 percent. Any bank which is meeting those four requirements will not be subjected to PCA. Friends, PCA applies on all banks which are functioning in India. These may be commercial banks in private or public sector, these may be foreign banks. So on all types of banks PCA applies. Friends, PCA actions can be mandatory actions which come into play automatically or these may be discretionary actions. These discretionary actions are initiated by Reserve Bank of India at its discretion. What type of action will be taken? What will be the degree of that action? Find the type of action that would be based on degree of damage which a bank has already suffered. And this action will be with a view to prevent further damage and bring the bank back to normal health. So whenever RBI shall initiate PCA, the type of action would depend upon the degree of damage the bank has already suffered. Friends, a bank shall be placed under PCA framework based on audited annual financial results and supervisory assessment of Reserve Bank of India. Reserve Bank of India conducts supervisory assessment every year in respect of every bank that is known as annual financial inspection. So based on the outcome of annual financial inspection 
RBI will take a decision about imposition of PCA. Friend, PCA was introduced long back in the year 2004, but it has been revised from 1st April 2017. Now let us see the benchmarks or the risk area when PCA will become applicable. So risk threshold 1 when PCA will apply. If a bank faces these situations, so threshold 1 PCA would apply. Let us now see these threshold levels. CRAR plus CCB, it has come down below 10.5%, but it is more than 7.75%. Similarly, Communicative Tier 1 plus CCB, it has fallen below 6.75%, but it is more than 5.125%. Net NP ratio, now it is more than 6%, but less than 9%. The negative return on asset is there for two consecutive years. Tier 1 leverage ratio has come down below 4%, but it is still more than 3.5%. So any bank falling in these levels will be subjected to threshold 1 PCA. What are mandatory actions in respect of risk threshold 1 level? Restriction on dividend payment, remittance of profits outside the country. Second, the promoters, the owners, the parents in case of foreign banks will be required to bring in more capital. So any bank which falls in this category will have to be subjected to these mandatory actions. Let us now see the risk threshold 2. In case of risk threshold 2, the CRAR plus a CCB level is less than 7.75%, but it is still more than 6.25%. The CET1 level plus a CCB level, it is less than 5.125%, but it is still more than 3.625%. Net NP ratio, it has moved to more than 9%, but it is still less than 12%. The negative return on assets, is there for three consecutive years and tier 1 leverage ratio it has fallen below 3.5 percent. In case of this type of, type of threshold the mandatory action would include in addition to mandatory action mentioned here there will be restriction on branch expansion and bank will be required to make higher provision as part of its coverage ratio. So these are the mandatory action points in respect of threshold 2 level. Let us now see threshold level 3. Capital adequacy ratio or CCB, it is not applicable in this case. CET1 plus CCB it has fallen below 3.625. Net NP ratio, it is more than or equal to 12%. There is negative return on assets for more for four consecutive years. And in this case, tier 1 leverage ratio shall not apply. So only these parameters shall apply. What type of mandatory action will be required in this case? So mandatory action, as in case of threshold 1, they will be applied. In addition to that, there will be restriction on branch expansion. Further, there will be restriction on management compensation and director's fee. So compensation being paid to the management or fee being paid to the directors, so that will be restricted. Friends, as I already said, in addition to mandatory actions, there can be discretionary actions also of Reserve Bank of India. 
what type of discretionary actions will be there. So these will be discretionary actions. So these actions can be in form of special supervisory interactions. These may relate to strategies or governance or capital related or credit risk related or human relations related or profitability related or operations related or any other. So here Reserve Bank of India would decide the type of discretionary action according to the damage which bank has suffered so that the bank could be brought back to normal financial health. Well friends, to summarize the objective of preventive corrective action or prompt corrective action is to bring a bank back to normal financial health in case it has suffered damage in respect of these four matter parameters. Friends, I am sure the contents of this lecture would benefit you and thank you very much for watching this video.